In this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of Hermitian transformations. So let's say I have a vector space and I have two vectors, alpha and beta. And let's say I also have a linear transformation called t. And let's say I'm applying t to the vector alpha. And I'm going to keep beta as it is. So now we have alpha applied with the linear transformation t, which changes alpha into some other vector. And let's say I want to take the inner product between these two vectors. So this would give me the inner product between the vector after you apply the linear transformation to alpha with the vector beta. And so let's say uh, we want to do something similar, but this time we're going to switch, this, uh, th switch things up a bit. So instead of applying the linear transformation to alpha, I'm going to apply it to beta. And let's say now I want to take the inner product between these two vectors again. So this would give me this expression, the inner product between alpha and the vector which you obtain after applying the linear, tra linear transformation to beta. So this process gives us another vector. So it would be natural to ask, how would these two values compare? So for some linear transformations, these might not be equal. But then for some linear transformation, these two expressions might actually be equal. And for those linear transformations where this equality is satisfied, those transformations will be called Hermitian transformations. So this is, this is what the, the term means. So those transformations where uh, this uh, this equality is satisfied. So for uh, Hermitian trans, uh, transformations, there are two theorems that you need to know. The first thing is that the eigenvalues associated with lin uh, Hermitian transformations are always real. And now I'm going to try to prove this. So let's say uh, T is a Hermitian transformation. That means for any two vectors, it satisfies this relationship over here. And then let's say uh, alpha is an eigenvector for this transformation. So that means this left-hand side expression is going to be equal to some scalar multiplied back by the vector alpha. And now I'm going to consider this expression over here. The inner product between alpha and the vector that you get after applying the linear uh, the Hermitian transformation to alpha. And then by this relationship I know that this vector, this other vector, can also be expressed as a scalar multiplied by alpha. And then by the rules of inner products, I can always pull out the lambda. So I can pull this lambda over to the outside like this. So uh, if we start off with this line, we arrive at this conclusion. But then recall that T is a linear uh, is a Hermitian transformation. So that means I can also switch this uh, switch the uh, linear transformation over to the front. So this is going to be equal to the inner product of the vector which you get after applying the transformation to alpha with the vector alpha. And then once again, I can apply this relationship over here, and this will give me the vector that is equal to the scalar lambda multiplied by alpha. And then now I'm going to use another one of the inner product rules, namely that if I take the conjugate of this, then I'll have to flip the order of these two vectors. So I can just flip the order of the two vectors here, and I attach a conjugate over here. So if you don't recall this rule, you can check back on the on the video about inner products, there are three rules that inner products must satisfy. So all I'm doing here is that I'm just applying those rules. And then I'm going to apply another one of the inner product rules. Namely, I'm going to pull the lambda outside. So I have lambda inner product of the alphas conjugate. So this conjugate includes the lambda as well. So now I can just put back the conjugate to the lambda and then put the conjugate to the inner product. And an inner product of a vector with itself is always real. So it doesn't make sense to put a conjugate over here, so I can just ignore this. Because a conjugate of a real number is just itself. There are no imaginary components for you to switch the sign. So you see that we started off with this term, and then we arrived at two conclusions. So this term could be equal to this, and it could also be equal to this. So that means these two expressions are going to be equal. So that means the conjugate of lambda multiplied by the inner product of alpha is equal to uh, lambda multiplied by the inner product of alpha. So this implies that lambda is equal to its conjugate. And so that means lambda must be real. It must have it must not have any imaginary components. Otherwise it would not be equal to its conjugate. So this is how we prove our first claim, namely that the eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator are always real. So there are always there uh, there are no imaginary components. So the second thing I'm going to prove is that let's say we have a eigenvector and this gives us this relationship. And let's say for this transformation we have another eigenvector that corresponds to a different 
uh, eigenvalue. So if I have two distinct eigen eigenvectors which correspond to two distinct, uh, two different eigenvalues, then it must be the case that these two vectors are orthogonal. That means the inner product between them must be equal to zero. So this is what I'm going to try to prove. So we're going to start off with this. So let's say we have our Hermitian transformation. We have uh, two eigenvalues, and for these eigenvalues, we have different associated eigenvectors. So now let's uh, take a look at this expression over here. The inner product between alpha and the vector that you get after applying the linear transformation to beta. So once again, I can just switch this term into, into this. So now it's the, linear, uh, it's the inner product between alpha and the vector that you get after multiplying the eigenvalue to beta. And then I can just pull the, pull the eigenvalue out so I get this expression. And then once again, don't forget this is a Hermitian transformation. That means I can pull this over to the front and it will still be the same. So that's the definition of Hermitian transformations. And now I can use this relationship and then I can put in the eigenvalue. So this is what I get. So now it's the inner product between the vector alpha multiplied by a scalar with the vector beta. And then now I'm going to apply the conjugate just to flip the order of the two vectors. And then I'm going to do something similar to what I did before. I'm just going to pull the lambda out. So this conjugate applies to the whole term. So we have the conjugate of lambda multiplied by the conjugate of the inner product between beta and alpha. And then we know that the eigenvalues must be real, so it doesn't make sense to, for us to put a conjugate over here, so we can just take this away. And the conjugate between the inner product of beta and alpha, I can just, by definition, I can just switch the order to get rid of the conjugate. So once again, this is one of the, another one of the inner product rules. You can switch the order by taking away the conjugate. So, and, and so this is what I get. So we started off from this term, and then we arrived at this term, and we were also able to arrive at this term. So this implies that lambda times the inner product between alpha and beta is equal to mu times the inner product between alpha and beta. And so by moving everything to the left-hand side, I get lambda minus mu times the inner product. So this gives us two possibilities. Either, the, uh, either lambda minus mu is equal to zero, which implies that lambda is equal to mu. But then this actually goes against uh, the assumption that we made at the start of this problem. We, we started off by considering the case where the two eigenvalues are distinct, where they are different. So we cannot use this uh, requirement to satisfy this, uh, this equation. So the only possibility now for, in order for this equation to be satisfied is that the inner product between alpha and beta must be equal to zero. And so there we have it. Now we have proved that the two eigenvectors must be orthogonal. So that means for Hermitian transformation, uh, we have uh, these uh, these eigenvalues and eigenvectors, and then if you have two different eigenvalues, if you take their respective eigenvectors together, and if you take the inner products, they will always be equal to zero. So this is the second claim.